In 1894, amidst the gathering of hundreds of thousands of yogis and ascetics at the Kumbh Mela in Prayagraj for a sacred dip in the Ganges, Sri Yukteswar Giri found himself present. Having recently undergone initiation into Kriya Yoga by his guru Lahiri Mahashay, it was during this event that he encountered his guru's guru, Mahavatar Babaji, the deathless yogi who had sustained his existence for centuries in his subtle body and had revitalized the lost science of Kriya Yoga by imparting it to Lahiri Mahashay. During their encounter, Babaji conveyed to Yukteswar that he would send a disciple who would eventually disseminate yoga in the West. This prophecy pointed directly to Paramhansa Yoganand, the author of Autobiography of a Yogi, who indeed went on to popularize his master's teachings in the West. But who was Sri Yukteswar, the guiding force behind the spiritual giant that Paramhansa Yoganand became? In Paramhans Yoganand's own words, his every utterance was chiseled by wisdom, the essence of truth, all pervasive with even a physiological aspect, came from him like a fragrant exudation of the soul. His feet were firm on the earth, his head in the haven of heaven. Sri Yukteswar fitted the Vedic definition of a man of God, softer than the flower where kindness is concerned, stronger than thunder where principles are at stake. Swami Sri Yukteswar Giri was an Indian monk and yogi and the guru of Paramhans Yoganand and Satyanand Giri. Back in 1884, Sri Yukteswar became a disciple of Yogi Raj Shyamcharan Lahiri Mahashay, reaching the spiritual stature of a Jnanavatar or wisdom incarnation. He became an expert in Kriya Yoga and a knowledgeable student of the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. As a guru, he established his presence in two ashrams, one in Sirampur and another in Puri, Odisha. He lived alternately throughout the year in the two ashrams and dedicated himself to instructing his pupils. Beyond his role as a guru, Sri Yukteswar was also an author, penning the holy science, as per Mahavatar Babaji's desire. Babaji envisioned a book that highlighted the fundamental harmony and unity between Hindu and Christian scriptures. Sri Yukteswar willingly took on the task. As this journey neared its end, Sri Yukteswar chose Paramhans Yoganand as his sole successor for all his ashram holdings. It was a passing of the torch, marking the continuity of spiritual wisdom from one great soul to another. On the 10th of May 1855, Sri Yukteswar was born Priyanath Karar in Sirampur, India, to a wealthy trader, Kshetranath and Kadambini Karar. From an early age, he took care of his farm holdings following the premature death of his father. Despite being a gifted student, he felt that his formal education was superficial and sluggish. While he was a student at Sri Rampur Christian Missionary College, he became interested in the Bible. He also spent two years as a student at Calcutta Medical College. Later, in his book, The Holy Science, he emphasized his interest in the Bible. His interest in education led him to create a curriculum for schools that covered physics, physiology, geography, astronomy, and astrology. He also wrote a basic book on astrology and first book, a book for Bengalis learning basic Hindi and English. Later on, he developed an interest in women's education, which at the time was unusual in Bengal. With particular expertise in Jyotish or Indian astrology, Sri Yukteswar recommended a variety of astrological bangles and gemstones to his students. As seen by the development of his Yuga hypothesis in the holy science, he was also an accomplished astronomer and scientist. Immediately after leaving university, he married and had a daughter. However, he soon became a widower, so he decided to devote himself to monastic life. He got the name Sri Yukteswar Giri. Therefore, Sri is not a distinct honor 
but part of his name. In 1884, Priyanath met Lahiri Mahasaya, who became his guru and initiated him into the path of Kriya Yoga. Sri Yukteswar spent a significant amount of time in the next several years in the company of his guru. He frequently visited Lahiri Mahasaya in Banaras. After being initiated into Kriya Yoga, it became the sole sadhana prescribed to his disciples. Sri Yukteswar strictly adhered to a vegetarian diet which facilitated the acceleration of spiritual development. Human evolution can be expedited by practicing Kriya Yoga, a yogic science. The second chapter of the ancient yoga literature, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, discusses Kriya Yoga. The original form of God communion taught by Lord Shri Krishna and Lord Jesus Christ is known as Kriya Yoga. It clears the mind of sensory interference. Sri Lahiri Mahasaya, Sri Yukteswar and Paramhansa Yoganand are the three Kriya lineage masters who have brought this age-old spiritual discipline to the current era. Lahiri Mahasaya was initiated into Kriya Yoga by Mahavatar Babaji, the immortal master, the deathless yogi. In 1894, after a decade of perfecting Kriya Yoga, Sri Yukteswar met his guru's guru, Mahavatar Babaji, marking the beginning of his mission on earth. It was amidst the gathering of hundreds of thousands of yogis and ascetics at the Kumbh Mela where Sri Yukteswarji first encountered Babaji. He spoke about his views on the thoughts of Western scientists who were much smarter than most of the attendees at the Kumbh Mela. These individuals lived in distant Europe and America, adhered to different creeds and were unaware of the true significance of Melas like the one being held today. It would be extremely beneficial for these individuals to meet the masters of India. However, despite possessing strong intellectual attainments, a large number of Westerners were committed to rampant materialism. Some, well known in philosophy and science, rejected the fundamental oneness of religion. Their beliefs acted as immovable obstacles that could drive them apart. After listening to him, Babaji remarked, I noticed that you're interested in both the West and the East. With a smile of appreciation, Babaji continued, That's why I called you here. East and West must create a golden middle path of activity and spirituality combined. In terms of material development, India has a lot to teach the West. In exchange, India can impart universal techniques that will enable the West to build its religious beliefs on the firm foundations of yogic science. Babaji informed Yukteswarji that you, Swamiji, are going to be involved in a peaceful interchange between the Orient and the Occident. I will send you a student in a few years so you may train them to spread yoga throughout the West. I feel like there are a ton of spiritually hungry beings there vibrating at once. I see potential saints who are only waiting to awaken in America and Europe. At this juncture in his narrative, Sri Yukteswar looked at Paramahansa Yoganand. You are the disciple that years ago Babaji promised to send me, he said grinning in the moonlight. That is how Paramahansa Yoganand spread his master's teachings on Kriya Yoga throughout America. After meeting Babaji, Sri Yukteswar converted his large family home into an ashram. On March the 22nd, 1903, he founded a second ashram in Puri, in the state of Odisha, eastern India, naming it Karar Ashram. The formation of the ashram was a milestone in the history of Kriya Yoga. Taken from the labyrinthine caves of the Himalayas to the plains by his master Lahiri Mahashay, Kriya Yoga was propagated by his deserving disciple, Sri Yukteswarji, to mingle with the infinite ocean. The master 
divided himself between the two ashrams to instruct his students and founded an organization called Sadhu Sabha. Sri Yukteswar was very interested in education, so much so that he insisted his disciple Yoganand to graduate. This led Sri Yukteswar to devise a school curriculum that included subjects like physics, physiology, geography, astronomy and astrology. Sri Yukteswar always had a few disciples and in 1910, the young Mukundalal Ghosh became the master's most famous student and the one who spread the practice of Kriya Yoga in the West, where he became known as Paramahansa Yoganand. Yoganand later explained that his teacher had few disciples due to his great severity. Sri Yukteswar and Yoganand's goal was to disseminate Eastern knowledge to the West so that the Western mind could fully appreciate and understand. He translated what ancient sages and saints had practiced and written in the scriptures into his own life through the four stages of Hindu life. Brahmacharya or celibacy, Grihastha or father of a family, Vanaprastha a life of a solitude and sannyas or renunciation with the realization of four purusharthas dharma, artha, kama and moksha to mark his illustrious life as complete and perfect. He initiated many sincere disciples recognized worldwide such as Paramhansa Yoganand and Paramhansa Hariharanand. They succeeded in making their master's dream come true by spreading Kriya Yoga to all corners of the world. Sri Yukteswar gives us a four-way approach in his book, The Holy Science. Number 1. The Gospel Sri Yukteswar emphasizes that true happiness cannot be found outside. External achievements do not provide lasting joy. To achieve happiness, the human heart seeks fulfillment in the three fundamental needs of Sat, Chit and Anand. True contentment arises when one follows the guidance of a Satguru, adheres to holy teachings and maintains moral conduct. By satisfying these three needs, one can overcome pain and ignorance, entering a state of Sat Chit Anand that transcends worldly problems. Number 2. The Goal The ultimate objective of life is Paramartha. It is the permanent cessation of all sufferings. Sri Yukteswar outlines the five pillars of Sat Chit Anand that ends suffering forever. Tapas or penance, Swadhyaya or self-study, Pranavdhyan or Om meditation, Shraddha or devotion, and vir or moral courage. Number 3. The Procedure Sri Yukteswar emphasizes meditation as the path to divinity. Consistent meditation practice provides clarity in correcting mistakes, nurtures intuition and kindness. The eligibility for meditation practice lies in vira or moral courage and shraddha or cultivating love to heed the holy word om. Healthy habits Positive company and pranayam techniques eliminate inner callousness. And number four, the revelation. Initiation into sadhana begins with immense love towards one's master and all beings. Sri Yukteswar suggests that only through such love can one delve deeper into sadhana, transforming into an initiate or pravartaka, progressing towards godliness, experiencing the holy Om's sound and evolving into a divine figure are the outcomes. Sri Yukteswar underscores the significance of love as virtuous behavior and quotes Sir Walter Scott, Love rules the court, the camp, the grove, the men below and the saints above. In his youth, Paramhansa Yoganand sought a guru and found Sri Yukteswar Giri, whose guidance and spiritual discipline prepared him for his global mission in the West. Even after death, 
Shri Teshwar continued to play a pivotal role in Yogananda's journey of founding the Self-Realization Fellowship in America and becoming a world-renowned teacher of Kriya Yoga. He once said to Yogananda, I will be your friend internally now or then, whether your mental state is very good or not. If you make a mistake, I will still be your friend. At that point, you will need my friendship the most. Yogananda recounted an experience he had after the physical death of his guru. Sitting on my, that is Paramhansa Yogananda's bed in the Bombay Hotel at 3 o'clock in the afternoon of June the 19th, 1936, I was roused from my meditation by a beatific light. The sunlight transformed into a supernatural splendor and the entire room seemed like a weird and amazing universe. As I beheld Sri Yukteswar in his physical form, waves of joy overcame me. My boy, that is. With a charming smile reminiscent of an angel, the master spoke softly. I asked him, Master of mine, why did you leave me, my heart's beloved? I was too elated to be coherent. How come you allowed me to attend the Kumbh Mela? How much I've hated myself for having abandoned you? Sri Yukteswarji replied, I didn't want to sabotage your joyful expectation of seeing the holy site where I initially encountered Babaji. I was only away from you briefly. Am I not back with you now? But are you the same Lion of God, Master? Do you have a body similar to the one I buried in the harsh Puri sands? Yes, I am the same, my child. This body is made of flesh and blood. To you it appears substantial, even if I perceive it as ethereal. I formed a whole new body from the cosmic atoms, precisely the same physical form that you had placed beneath the dream sands of Puri in your dream world. The truth is that I have risen again, but not to earth, but to an astral world. Its people are more capable of living up to my high ideals than earthly humans. One day, you and your heavenly loved ones will join me there. Later, he wrote, a true guru is ever living, even when no longer residing in a physical body. Through his oneness with God's omnipresence and omniscience, a true guru is always aware of the disciple and watches over him or her with constant love and protection. As spring arrived in March of 1936 at Puri Karar Ashram, Swami Shri Yukteswar Giri took his last breath. He was sitting at Padmasan with his eyes focused at the center of his eyebrows. He asked his disciple Narayan to support his chest and waist with both hands and the disciple complied. Shri Yukteswar Giri entered the state of deepest Samadhi. His body was absolutely calm and stable he consciously freed himself from his body. His disciple, Narayan, felt a slight pulsation from the chest of his guru's body to the Brahmarandra, the top of his head, and also heard a very slow sound resembling the sound Om. Shocked, he kept massaging his calm body for a long time. He did not die. He just left his physical body for a body that made him more capable and free. The astonishing account of his resurrection before Yoganandaji in a Mumbai hotel after his Mahasamadhi, recounting his stay in Hiranyalok and repeatedly appearing before Paramhansa Hariharanand and other disciples, fills the devotees with spiritual vibrations. Sri Yukteswar's teachings were mainly for serious practitioners, monks or householders. However, he also taught about the importance of righteous conduct selfless service, logical or rational thinking, and proper education for young boys and girls. As for rationality, he said that it is easier for a scientist to be truly spiritual and unravel the whole mystery of creation because the truly scientific minds may already have the power of attention and focus, which is needed to focus on the inner being and discover the deeper dimensions which could prove the spiritual realities to the practitioner.
Sri Yukteswar Giri is regarded as the incarnation of knowledge itself. As W. Y. Evans Wentz felt about him, worthy of the veneration which his followers spontaneously accorded to him, content to remain afar from the multitude, he gave himself unreservedly and in tranquility to that ideal life which Paramhansa Yoganand, his disciple, has now described for the ages. Sri Yukteswar was, how Vedas defined a man of God, softer than the flower where kindness is concerned, stronger than thunder where principles are at stake. Although he is revered as a god by thousands of his followers even today, but his message echoes that of the Buddha. Be a light unto yourself. In his own words, Look, there is no point in blindly believing that after I touch you, you will be saved or that a chariot from heaven will be waiting for you. Because of the Guru's attainment, the sanctifying touch becomes a helper in the blossoming of knowledge. And being respectful towards having acquired this blessing, you must yourself become a sage and proceed on the path to elevate your soul by applying the techniques of sadhana given by the Guru.